What is up everyone? Today I am going to be talking through the things that I have learned from taking the Drawbox course. This is lesson two that I'm reviewing. So some of the ups, some of the downs, basically my journey through the whole, the whole lesson. Uh, a little bit of background for those of you who don't know, I've been practicing how to draw now from the beginning of this year. So about eight months in the ninth month of learning how to draw. And if you want to learn what a new artist is going through, uh, feel free to join me on this journey. As I go through here, I'll be talking about the ups and downs, things that I'm learning, my frustrations, my celebrations as I start getting better. Currently, I am almost through Drawbox Lesson 3. Uh, so getting a little bit behind in the videos as well. But again, that's a common thing here as I'm focusing more on the drawings. But as always, we will get caught up. And so, yeah, I'll be sharing a few things. Again, if you want to join me on my journey, feel free to hit the subscribe button, like the video, and show me some love. All right, so uh, the first thing is, the first thing that I, I really learned going into lesson two here, which was a little bit tougher, um, was you're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna make mistakes right off the bat. Take a look at that. That has not curved. Your ribbon should not look like that. It is not a racetrack that you're drawing from an overhead view. Um, but sometimes following those lines around, it gets a little bit tricky and you really need to pay attention, but you will make mistakes. But that is okay. You still learn, you still develop. Um, it'll be okay, you will you will get through it. So this was the ribbon exercise. We had to do two pages of these. That was page one, this is page two. Getting a little bit more comfortable on this page as I was going through. Uh, but there was still the fair factor there, you know, making these swooping lines, trying to make sure that they line up really paying attention to what was happening on the lines um, and how the curved edges were lining up. Um, you'd see in some of these, I get them parallel. In some, not so much. And you end up going across instead of a parallel up and down. But again, a main takeaway here is that the, it's not about perfection. It's about giving it a good shot and You'll learn a lot of things. What what I've been seeing in myself is that you'll learn a lot of things and then almost seemingly unlearn them and have to relearn them again. But I think this is going to be a common theme throughout a lot of the progress in, in, in doing art here. Okay, so we got into some organic shapes here. And um, on this one, on this specific page, our task was to complete the full ellipse. Um, so we have our organic shapes, we have our minor axis going through the middle here, and we're supposed to be doing ellipses, kind of turning the, the shape as well. Uh, this looked okay here, <laughs> and when I went over to this other page where we would just be doing contour lines, again, a learning, <laughs> a learning stage here. Initially, with these small ellipses, I got the understanding that they should be at the front of the organic shape. And I was just thinking, oh, the front, the direction in which the organic shape, if it's like a little worm or something, is headed in. That is not the case. So it should actually be the side of the organic shape that is facing you. So. If you look, for example, on this organic shape here, it is clear that this is the back that is facing you and this is going away from you based on the contour lines. This little lips should be on this end because the rounded side of the shape, that side is facing you right about there. And you would see on most of these, I actually have the little small circle lips on the wrong end. Now, that doesn't mean that there isn't a little circle ellipse on that forward facing side of the organic structure, but it's just not, it, 
you you won't see it <laughs> this one you won't see this one you should be seeing Eh, again you'll make mistakes this is one that hey probably now that I've said it you don't have to make that one again but I think the journey is gonna be full of making mistakes so it's okay even if you still make the same mistake now this is where things started to get interesting for me in lesson number two I saw this I saw the demonstration for this um, and the first thing that came to my mind was I'm not gonna be able to do this <laughs> so just remember we're using ink here and you have one shot at it which is kind of nerve-wracking especially starting to get into these more uh, complicated designs but another thing that I've learned here is that in a lot of the lessons so far again remember I'm almost through lesson number three a lot of the exercises look complicated up front and what you really need to do is just build up the courage to get started get started and in the end when you look back at it mistakes and all flaws and all it actually looks a lot better than you thought going through it and you learn as you go through it and you adapt as you go through it so here we were coming up with our textures uh, basically talking through what some of the defining features of it was or were and then uh, going from the shadow side to the light side uh, of the texture um, basically building out some of the shadow shapes that would have been produced by or cast shadows that would have been produced by those shapes so this one was an oak tree by far my favorite one on this page super cool man I tell you it was exciting let's talk about this page okay <laughs> because um, doing this page just to tell you the truth I started getting inspired um, after I saw how this page turned out um, again this was one of those which which during the um, instructional phase where they were demoing what we needed to do I was so intimidated by doing this page um, it's dissections but using textures the textures on the outside don't need to match what's on the inside we have onions on the inside fish scales on the outside it doesn't matter you just need to get used to putting textures on to objects and again the demonstration for this was so intimidating I went into it not really knowing how to uh, actually put the textures on here uh, taking a few stabs at it and believe it or not this broccoli uh, was the first texture I did along with this grapefruit and going through it it just felt oh, like oh but I don't know what I'm doing I'm struggling and then at the end I looked back at it and I don't know working working with the ink as well <laughs> my it just looks it has this look as if it's printed um, in the end and my kids came and they looked at it and they're like did you print that out and I was like no dad drew that boom kudos I tell you man it or, or, or woman in this case <laughs> it, it looks hard at first and you struggle through it you make the mistakes um, but in the end when you push through it you learn you learn something um, so these aren't perfect even though I'm really proud of how it turned out they're not in any way is perfect but you learn something and I think that's the key to continued progress just learn something so this was really cool this was supposed to be a paper towel which in my mind totally failed but it's still okay it, it turned out okay so there are quite a few other textures here this metal I really like and we go over to this other page we had to do two pages of these textured dissections um, here of course there's a big mistake where I just ran across my dissection lines here um, but again you're gonna make mistakes I think it's okay of course I'm telling 
myself that it's okay. Um, the most important thing is is learning, and and this is where I really started getting inspired to do more than just figure drawing. Um, it's like I don't know. This just kind of captured my attention as well. I before I was just like oh, all these other stuff. I don't know, but man, just doing this, see how the forms turned out, just really inspired me to to maybe. Uh, Take another look at, at, at some of the other things that I could be doing as I learn art and, and improve my techniques and my abilities. Uh, so yeah, this was really this was really cool. Give it a shot, guys. If you're if you're getting onto Drawbox, don't worry. It will be very intimidating starting off, but you can get through it. You can get through it. Okay, so here we have now some. Uh, intersecting geometry geometric shapes uh, this was another one that was kind of intimidating I didn't quite understand uh, starting off what they actually want us to do how the lines were supposed to work as the shapes intersect and this was the first page I did which had a lot of struggling in it <laughs> um, but I'm gonna I'm going to tell you um, one of the things that I started thinking about in doing these intersections that made it a little bit better for me in terms of my understanding of it instead of struggling through each one. Um, and, and I can do it in terms of this example right up here. So the basic idea of how you should think about these intersecting forms is that you're following the line or the surface of one of the objects at first. So if we're following the cylinder line, we follow the cylinder line around and at some point that um, ellipse of the cylinder, that line crashes into the surface of the box. And at that point where it crashes, I'm going to pull a pencil here just to make sure we're seeing it. At the point where that ellipse crashes into the surface of the box, your line should then start following the surface of the box. So now we're following the surface of the box, which this top plane of the box is headed in this direction, back along the cylinder. It turns and heads down onto this plane of the box. So we're still following the uh, surface of the box here and at some point when that line that you're following the surface of the box intersects again with the ellipse of the cylinder you're now back onto the following the line for the cylinder and that's kind of how I looked about uh, looked at these and it really helped out these intersections and really helped it make sense to me so again you see here following the cylinder it crashes into the ball or a circle or a sphere in this case it's 3d and it follows the surface of the, the sphere around until it hits back to the cylinder and we're back to the shape of the cylinder so that was a really cool understanding for me and i hope that helps someone who may be going through this exercise and need to kind of figure out exactly how they're supposed to be thinking through these intersections um, and here we have one with just uh, boxes intersecting. All of my intersections probably aren't exactly right in terms of how they should intersect in space if they were all in one place. Uh, but I, I did try by this point down today and try to get at least um, if this box is on top and the other one is below, make sure that my intersections are kind of matching that up. So. There were a few more of these that we had to run through. Um, so yeah, that was, again, one of those where it felt tough up front, but stuck through it and it worked out. Uh, now, here are these organic shapes, kind of sausages that kind of get lumped onto each other. And we are supposed to make them look three-dimensional based on how they're dropped on top of one another. 
Um, this is another one that seemed a little bit complicated and scary to get started out. I opted to go a little bit bigger for my forms, um, and I think it was cool. By now I had <laughs> the understanding of where these circles, uh, smaller ellipses are supposed to go on the forms, and you basically accentuate with shadow shapes, and the shadow shapes follow the form of the shape that's being the shadow is being cast onto so not the shape of this so it doesn't come off that way it wraps around the shape underneath that shadow is getting cast onto um, so this one of the interesting things with with this going through this exercise is that it seems a little bit confusing up front when you're just drawing in the construction and all the lines are inter mingling with each other and crossing over and it, it seems like it's going to be a mess but just stick with it um, what I found is that when you come back after you've laid it all out and put in the define the outside lines of the shapes and put in the shadow shapes then it just all makes sense <laughs> and the construction lines that go behind and overlap they, they it's it's gonna be okay it is going to be okay. So yeah, we had two pages of this. Um, so this was page one and this was page two. Uh, page two, I probably would have changed some things a little bit more about this one in terms of how this shape comes up behind that one. And so it kind of overlaps in a weird way. But again, it's okay. You get through the exercise and the whole point is to learn. It's not for it to be perfect, but you're just thinking as you go through it. Um, and at least this is the point for me, and this is my takeaway from it. Um, and I am just a dude who's trying to learn this stuff. So it's not, if it doesn't work for you, that's fine. Find your own way. But the important point is to be engaged as you do it and try to figure it out as you go along. So yeah, that was lesson two of Drawbox. As I said, I'm almost done with lesson three. I have stack of papers lining up from just my general practice that I need to also have another review lesson for but yeah if you've gotten this far and you want to uh, give me a thumbs up and say hey I hope you make it in your art journey I think that drawing is a cool skill to have I do have a full-time job and so uh, just working through these things in my free time, just seeing how far I can push it, probably being probably a little bit more um, intentional than the average hobbyist in terms of how I'm going through this, uh, but really want to see how far, how far I can push this. And some of the inspiring things that I've seen on Instagram of other artists, I mean, wow. Just the thought that maybe someday, if I continue my practice some years down the road, I could be drawing those fantastic images that I'm seeing on Instagram. My mind is blown. I want to see it happen. If you want to see it happen, you want to encourage me along, subscribe to the channel, follow my progress, uh, continue to give me some inspiration. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks everyone for watching. Until next time. Bye.